What is up boys and girls? What you're joining me today on the Takeshima, a beautiful little island just outside of our city. I'm here today with Clint. And uh, yeah, today's topic, once we get away, get back on the road and away from this island, is um, there's a YouTuber in Tokyo called Tokyo Sam. And uh, recently, a couple of months ago, he made a video with uh, a friend of his who got locked up, who got put in jail in Japan. And uh, basically, he interviewed him. And, well, need, I have experience with jail in Japan. So today's topic is going to be, basically, what is life like in jail in Japan? So, stay tuned, and I'll get onto the road. <laughs> Got a pet cat. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that fucking eagle will get it. Whoa! Holy shit! How can we? How can we get him to come this way? Take the kid. <laughs> All right then, so as I was saying, today's video is going to be about what is it like to be in jail in Japan. Now, uh, there's one little clause in this video. I'm not going to say what I was in jail for, and I don't really want people asking. So if you comment, I will ignore you. Anyhow, anyhow, so I've lived in this country for 12 years. In that time, I've been locked up twice. First time was for just under a month, and the second time was for 20 days exactly. I'll tell you why later. But, um,. So basically, I'm just going to tell you what it's like and what the procedures you have to go through are. So the first thing is you get arrested, right? So in my case, it was night time, 10.30 at night, uh, arrested in my house. I was drunk as a skunk and kicked off big time, started punching the cops, telling them, get the fuck out of my house, don't touch me, you bastards, all that kind of stuff. Typical retarded behavior. So obviously, I'm not obviously I'm not bragging I'm not proud about going to jail quite the opposite I'm kind of ashamed and embarrassed about it but that's a, that's a different story basically I'm just going to tell you what life is like in that case so I was handcuffed with hands and feet and about five of these cops picked me up and carried me like a suitcase out my apartment <laughs> bashed my head in the elevator and like we were pretty rough to be honest but I sort of deserved it because you know I was giving them trouble but anyway they stuck me in a car and then um, took me to the police station now the thing about this country is it doesn't matter where you live it's where you're arrested so in my case I was actually arrested in my house so they took me to the local police station but say you were out out on the on the town or something they would take you to the whatever police station you were you were nearby so first things first they uh, sort of book you in whatever you call it process you check your name make sure you've got make uh, check your ID they ask you is this who you are your name your date of birth your blood type your height your weight they check all these things and then the fingerprints uh, fingerprints is not done with a block of ink and your you know paper like in the old days it's all digital now so you you do it on the screen and the the cops actually press your fingers to make sure they're flat and all that so once that's done you go to the interview room and they ask you what you done what do you know why you've been arrested and all this kind of stuff now if you're a smart ass like me and you say don't know don't know what you don't know what i'm here for it won't help your cause unless you think you can actually get away with it but if you if you sort of know that you're done for just tell the truth otherwise it'll be it'll just increase the time that you're in the in the jail so in my case i you know pleaded oh, i don't know what's going on um too drunk sorry so they sort of gave up on the question and threw me in the cell for the night 
And once you get into the cell, uh, it's about three meter long by two meter wide cell with uh, tatami, like Japanese style flooring and a toilet and uh, obviously bars, you know, like, like in the old Western movies, big steel bar door that they, they shut and lock you in. And it's all dark in there because it's night time, no, light, no lights are on. And uh, basically they issue you with a duvet, a pillow and like a futon, you know, like a, a mattress, a very thin mattress. And that's it, you just go to sleep then. You've got nothing else to do until the next morning. So the daily routine is 7 a.m. the lights come on and uh, they wake you up. Now in my local police station, the third floor is the jail and there's a probably, I think there's eight or nine rooms and each one has two or a maximum of three people in. So roughly 20 people in the morning, the, the routine is uh, in pairs so they open the, uh, the, the, the rooms, the cells individually. So first thing they do, you have to do is fold up your mattress and your duvet and your pillow and put it into the storage room, which is uh, next to where the, um, the policeman, like the attendant policeman is, is sat. So uh, yeah, and you have to do it very neatly as well. You can't just shove it in there, otherwise they get arsy with you and then you have to do it again. When that's finished, they give you two buckets. One has just water in it and a, a cloth, a cleaning cloth. And the other one has a little brush and it's full of bleach. So you have to clean the toilet and then clean the tatami or clean the, the walls, whatever you want to clean, basically. And they give you a vacuum cleaner. So where is it? <laughs> so they give you a vacuum cleaner. So you do that for about probably five minutes, I'd say. Um, and then after that you have to oh look at this bouncy boobies on the left oh yeah well i didn't get arrested for being a pervert either by the way <laughs> Hold on. anyway so yeah once you've done your cleaning then you have to uh it's called semen which is basically you get you got a little um a little bowl like a plastic bowl like a bucket type bowl thing a uh, bar of soap toothbrush and toothpaste and a little towel that they issue you and uh, basically you just have to wash your face brush your teeth when that's done you go back to your cell and wait for everyone else to finish doing the cleaning then uh, around well just before eight o'clock you get your breakfast which is a uh, bowl of rice and a uh, there's only two things that come one is like a potato croquet, you know, like a fried potato cutlet thing. Or you get two pieces of fried chicken and a bowl of uh, miso soup. But that's basically it. And throughout the day you get tea, like Japanese tea, three times a day. So the first one is breakfast, uh, then you get it at 10 o'clock, then at lunchtime, then 6 p.m. And then there's one more at 8 p.m. before bedtime. So maybe five times you get tea throughout the day. And actually, you can actually ask for water at any time that you need water. Um, right, so breakfast is over. Then they have something called undo. Undo means exercise, but they don't let you do any exercise, actually. All undo time is, is uh, cutting your nails, brushing your hair, uh, using an electric, electric shaver because you're not allowed a real razor. Or you can just sit. You can just sit there for 20 minutes and do nothing. So that you you got 20 minutes basically where they, as long as the weather's good, they let you go outside. But it, which is sort of like a balcony, but it's all enclosed. You can't see outside or anything. You just see like concrete walls, and basically there's basically no roof. That's all it is. It's sort of like a glorified balcony. So um, yeah. Then after that's finished, you have literally nothing to do until lunchtime at 12 o'clock. Right, it seems like we're stopping, so let me continue this story in a minute. Right, where was I? Welcome back, everyone. So yeah, lunchtime is dead on 12 o'clock. Lunchtime, uh, you get a reasonable lunch, to be honest. It was actually quite funny, because when, uh, be when I was working as a mechanic, we used to get our lunches supplied by the company, and the lunch company in the jail was the same as the, com <laughs> the company lunches. So the lunch was actually reasonably good, to be honest. So, like, you get a, a tray of rice, and like a selection of like little um, like pickles and like a little salad and then some meat like usually fish uh, but sometimes you got nice chicken and uh, like fried stuff as well so the food itself was pretty decent the same the same uh, at night time six o'clock you get your dinner so yeah but basically between breakfast time and dinner time 
there's absolutely nothing to do you're just in the cell cell the whole time and they get pissy with you if you stand up or you do exercise and stuff so basically your only option is just to sit down on the on the floor and just read books now depending on where you are good luck with uh having something in english to read luckily where i was there was uh 10 different books um in english so i read them all and they were ridiculously boring the history of scotland was one of them and the other uh, like the there was a couple of romance novels that were definitely for women written by women and some the other two books were written by these indian like guru type people talking about meditation and life and stuff like that so because all you've got to do that whole time you're there is just think those meditation books were actually pretty good i was practicing um relaxation methods and stuff like that so that wasn't too bad but basically yeah it's just ridiculously boring you've got no jobs to do or you're not allowed to you know walk around or anything like that so you you just lie down reading a book the whole time and to be honest if you're lucky you get dragged out to have another interview again because at least then you get to stand up and walk to the other room and stuff like that um so yeah that's basically what happens then and uh, now if you're there for two weeks like i am you will be transported then to like the courts uh because the court has like a, a judge but it's not like a like what you would think about in movies or if you've ever been to a real life courtroom it's not like that it's just an office in like the law the governor's building i don't know what you want to call it the city law office you go up there and it's exactly the same as what happens in the police station what did you do why did you do it do you admit to this do you admit to that you know like do you plead guilty or not guilty sort of thing and in my case i had to go there three times in, on the first the first uh, arrest so to get there um they put this vest on you like a mesh vest with rope and they rope you all around your waist and around your chest and they handcuff you and the rope is uh basically you're walked like a dog by a security officer not an actual police officer a guy in a suit walks you so he's pulling on the lead and say all right off you go and then you have to you know put your face up against the wall all these kind of things um so yeah that's kind of humiliating as well like the fact that they make you walk around like a dog but uh yeah that is actually a, a kind of a respite you know because you're lying down reading the whole time and you just got you're fucking bored and uh some people i would guess would get start to get depression and stuff i was okay but yeah you just you, there's absolutely nothing to do so getting out is actually uh, a good feeling so then what else do you get you showers you only get shower twice a week uh my case it was uh, saturdays and wednesdays you can have a shower now the next problem is you don't know you're going to get arrested so you don't have an overnight bag packed so whatever you were wearing at the time is what you're wearing the whole time you're there so if you're there for 20 days you're wearing the same underpants the same socks the same pants the same shirt that you were arrested in now my case as well my jeans had rips in them you know like trendy rips on on purpose so they consider that as a danger because you could uh use it to uh, maybe harm yourself so that goes then i was wearing a button shirt not allowed that either that goes so then you basically have to go through this big box of uh borrowed clothes that are not clean they're kind of stinky and if you're a tall fucker like me you got absolutely no chance of finding anything that fits so you're wearing these tiny japanese large size which is basically a european small size probably t-shirts and, and shorts that don't fit so you look like a fucking a pedophile you know like your belly's hanging out of the fucking t-shirt because it's so small so yeah, that demoralizes you as well because you know that you <laughs> you know you just look like a twat so there's that as well so you're allowed to shower twice a week and then um once a week you can use the washing machine to wash your clothes but if you don't have any spare clothes then you can't wash them because otherwise you'd just be naked for the whole day while they're washing your clothes which is not allowed so yeah that's something else that's that you know sort of fucks with you mentally a bit the fact that you're wearing disgustingly smelly clothes that you smell your own ass and you can smell your own sweat and stuff so that's pretty nasty 
So yeah, basically you've been arrested, you've been booked in, you've been given your mattress and your duvet, you've had your three lunches a day, then night time, you get another cup of tea at uh, 8 o'clock and then the lights go out at 9 o'clock. When the lights go out you have to return the books, you know, through the little, little hole where you receive your food and stuff. You put your books through there and the lights go out, but like I said, you're just thinking the whole day. Even though, and you've done no, no exercise whatsoever, so you're not tired. So you just lie down looking up at the ceiling till like midnight and then eventually you get to sleep. And basically that cycle continues every day for as long as you're there. Now the rules are, when you're arrested, you're, you've not actually been charged with anything until the final court appearance. So the law, the Japanese law is they can hold you for 10 days uh, without any, you know, without, basically without any proof they can hold you for 10 days. Then the judge will decide whether he's got enough evidence or not. And if he doesn't have enough evidence, he'll extend that for another 10 days. So legally you can only be held for 20 days and then you'll go to court. So it's not until the end of that 20 days that you find out if you're going to a real prison or not. Uh, now a real prison, there's not that many of them in the country. There's sort of workhouses and then there's like what we would consider in the West to be a real jail or real prison where you know pretty harsh conditions, you got stuff to do every day, there's like workshops and stuff like that. But they're also very harsh, you're not allowed to do any exercise whatsoever in those jails and I've heard that you're there for a year and a half, you're losing 15 kilos. So the other bad thing about those jails is because you're not allowed any form of exercise, your muscles start to deteriorate and you can actually get um, a sickness in your muscles. Uh, lots of people who have been to jail for 20 years in this country can't walk when they get out. And so yeah, it's a, it's a very, very harsh system. Now where I was wasn't particularly harsh, it was just the fact that it's ridiculously boring, you've just got nothing to do. So um, yeah, the, it's just the boredom factor that, that starts to fuck with your head a bit. Um, now as to the actual, you know, my treatment or whatever, whether it was because I was a foreigner, I don't know. Whether it was left, yeah? So yeah, whether it was because I was a foreigner, they may have treated me a bit differently, but I didn't feel like I was treated harshly, to be fair. Um, the first couple of days, they're ridiculously, you know, they're doing that whole good cop, bad cop. Like, it was so, I don't want to be too rude to them, but it was pathetic. Like, they had obviously watched too many Western police dramas. So the one guy's like, you fucking asshole, you fucking did it, didn't you? Just fucking admit it, you piece of shit, like, like this, and, and slapping you on the head and stuff, and knocking over your drink, <laughs> like literally like that. And then that guy leaves the room, and then the other guy's like, oh, I'm really sorry about him. He's, uh, you know, he's obviously had a bad day. I, he's not normally like this, I'm really sorry. Just, just tell him, just tell him. It's better for you if you tell him what you've done, you know? So very, very cliched, good cop, bad cop. But after the first couple of days of this, they started to come round to, um, you know, figure out that I wasn't a particularly uh, bad person, like I'm not a fucking villain or, you know, so then they started to treat me nicely. And they actually, um, the good thing about this country's legal system is they really do care if you, if you are sorry or not. Like if you, if you show that you're apologetic and you really do want to say, um, you know, I'm sorry about what I did, they will be lenient to you. So I was basically like, the first couple of days I was still like angry and like, yeah, fuck these pigs kind of attitude. But once I realized that that's not gonna help my case, not gonna help my cause if I act like a badass, I started to say, yeah, look, all right, I did do it. I'm very sorry, I'd like to apologize. I'd like to, um, you know, hurry up and get to the court so I can uh, get my get my sentence and all that. So they were sort of fair, to be honest. I wouldn't say that they were abusive in any way. I mean, they were harsh, they were strict, but not overly. Um, but yeah, so after my 20 days, uh, the final day I went to the, uh, sorry, the day before the last day, I went to the courts again 
and spoke to the judge. Again, this isn't in a courtroom, this is just like an office. Um, told him, yeah, all right, I, I'll accept whatever, pen, whatever, um, whatever penalty you give me. I, I've, admit, I've admitted that I did it. I was in the wrong, I understand that. So he said, right, fine, I, I'm, I've taken everything into account. Um, you'll get my reply tomorrow. So the very last day, you know you're getting out because the cops tell you the day before and they, um, they ask you to check all your belongings. So they, they, um, they give you your phone back. Well, they don't give you back, but they let you see all your stuff. So you see your wallet, you see your phone, you see your lighter and your smokes, and you see your clothes and whatnot. So you know you're getting out. So your last day, you're feeling pretty good. Now, the last day, what happens is, in my case, it was lunchtime. Again, you're in the vest again with the rope. So, you know, walking around like a dog again. And they take you in the, the bus, the blacked out window bus, to the actual courts this time. Then they put you in another cell while you wait your turn. And uh, finally, if they've decided that you don't have to have a trial, uh, you sign a piece of paper that says, yeah, I agree that I can be tried without, without a trial, without a jury. Um, they basically just give you a fine and they let you know if you've got a criminal record or not. So in my case, no criminal record, uh, but a fine. The fine was about $2,500 plus a $1,000 or something else. So once you've got that piece of paper that says you've got to pay this, you then go to another building, which is kind of like the payment center. So when you're in the payment center, they ask you, how much money have you got on you now? So you open your wallet and you're like, yeah, I got like 50 bucks. Oh, well, that's not good enough. So you got two weeks to pay it, they basically tell you. So you, if you've got no money, you're pretty buggered. But what happens is they say to you, right, two choices. You either pay by this date or you go to the actual jailhouse again, like a workhouse, a real one. And every day that you're there will knock 5,000 yen, so like $50 off of your fine. So if you've got a big fine, like say you've got a thousand dollar fine, it'll take you 20 days to pay it off. So in my case, it would have taken like two months to, to pay off my fine. So yeah, I didn't want to do that, so I paid it. But uh, yeah, that's basically what, what it's like going to jail in Japan. It's not a pleasant experience, but it's not, uh, it's not fucking Guantan Guantanamo Bay either. So guys, if you're going to come to Japan, please do your best to not break the law. Yep. So, that's uh, today's video over and done with. Tokyo Sam, I hope you listened and watched my video. If you have any comments, please let me know. And guys, as uh, we're on Corona lockdown and I'm not going to work, I'll probably be making videos quite regularly. So, please do hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.